Hi, welcome back to Edge Baston. In the background, Laura Wright Singer is practicing the national anthems. We've got Mel Jones, former Aussie international, former England captain Michael Afton has joined Nick Compton and myself. So, Mel, you've done this before. You got 100 on debut in the Nashes series. How excited are you about this one? Yeah, look, nerves galore, I think, for, for all the players. And I think if anyone says it's just another game or it's just another series, they're absolutely kidding themselves. Um, so you don't play it any differently, but I think you've just got to embrace just the enormity of it all um, and the excitement. I mean, this is dead quiet at the moment. It's going to change exponentially, isn't it, within the next hour or so. And the, the quicker both teams can settle in and, and just take it in, um, the better chance they've got of getting off to a good start. Of course, the Aussies, World Test Champions... Are they the so, best team in the that? world? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <Here we go. laughs> Are they the best team in the world? Uh, well, they've got the title to say it at the moment. I think most importantly for the Australians was that over that two-year cycle, they had massive tours away to India and Sri Lanka and Pakistan and came away, away with points there. So there's certainly a confidence within the group to be able to perform well on the big stage away from home. Michael, can you call this one, this series? No, absolutely not. It's impossible to call, I think. Um, but huge anticipation. I think it's probably you know, not since 2005 have we anticipated an Ashes series this, this eagerly. You've got two teams coming to the boil at the right time. England are 11 from 13 in the last year under Stokes. Aussies obviously world test champions, as you said. But more than that, I think there's just an underlying fascination about how these slightly different philosophies will go when they clash England's, you know, basballing, freewheeling style against an Aussie team that certainly last week against India looked very, very drilled and disciplined in the slightly old-fashioned Aussie way. Old-fashioned Aussie way. I'll leave that there. Old-fashioned. I thought we had Douglas Charlie. <laughs> oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, England, of course, freewheeling, as Mike said. Now, you spent some time with the skipper, Ben Stokes, didn't you, yesterday? We can have a little listen to that to see about Stokes' philosophy. It's very... Obvious to players that the hype around the series is, you know, big, um, as you just mentioned, because of the way that obviously Australia have just won the World Test Championship, and and we've been playing our cricket and doing really well, um, you know, since over the last year. So um, you can sense why everyone's you know really looking forward to it. But for me, the in particular for this three days before we've played the first test, it was around how sort of I am and how. I speak and not being any different to what I've been like over the last you know year um, because if I did speak any different if I did start being a little bit I don't know more serious or more I don't know then the lads would see that and think why is he being different Mike told me that actually that's the most brilliant interview, so you've got to watch it in full in our cricket coverage. What lunchtime did you say? <laughs> We're running it, but I'm not sure I quite said it's the most brilliant interview, but it's worth listening to. How did he seem? He looks relaxed there in his bucket hat. He amazingly relaxed. You know, it's a day yesterday where the day before the game, captains of both sides are put under enormous scrutiny. They, they go in and do in a million interviews. They do the big written media, then they'll do a private one for the English written media. There'll be endless um, interviews for television and, and various radio stations. So it, it was funny, we were doing it up on the balcony and halfway through that interview, this, the PA system suddenly started blaring out tunes as if we were in Ibiza at one o'clock in the morning. And we had to stop for about 10 or 15 minutes. But he was unbelievably chilled about it. And, you know, I can imagine myself back in the day, I might have been slightly on tenterhooks. But he sat there, he was absolutely helpful and seemed very calm. Um, but I think both captains will be happy once the toss is out of the way this morning and actually they can just get on with the business of playing all the, the hoopla and the hype. We kind of feel it. I think the players now, once the game starts, will just go into that slight bubble in their dressing room and shut it all out. Nick, who's got the better captain? Oh, what a question. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you ask one of them that? <laughs> Look, I, I think Ben Stokes has shown himself to be an outstanding, outstanding captain. I, I, I think if you go back sort of two years, would we have you know, predicted Ben Stokes to have the impact that he has? And I'm not sure we, we would have. Um, you know, in Australia, I think Pat Cummins has got a big job in his hand. Yeah, in many ways, Australia have almost played in a way where Pat hasn't had to do a huge amount. The team's quite experienced. The players know what they're doing. 
So there hasn't been a huge challenge for him, I think, from a captaincy perspective. I think against this England team, if they do come out and play in the way that we've seen them play over the last year, then there'll be some different questions for, for Pat Cummins. You know, if England get off to a flyer, if Ben Duckett starts cutting balls that other players are leaving and, and Zach Crawley plays and unfurls some of the cover drives and pull shots we've seen, you know, will they have to resort to more defensive tactics? We don't know. So um, both very experienced, very hard to call and both very good at, in their own right. What do you think, Mel? How are Australia going to deal with the way England play cricket at the moment? Yeah, I think they'll sort of cast their minds back to, and we spoke about it last night, um, headingly, dare I say, that match. <laughs> and you can sort of see, you know, it was Tim Payne that was captain at the time. Yeah. Um, a lot of the bowling bowlers are still in that game now. And all of a sudden, Ben Stokes just took the game on. And there was this slight little panic of, you know, what do we do? Are we putting fielders out? Are we bringing them in? Um, so I think a little bit of knowledge from that into building into this series is certainly come, going to come to play. Andrew McDonald, the Australian coach, is a meticulous guy in terms of preparation and he's very calm and he talks about tempo and not pivoting if you don't need to, so don't panic. And I think that's the, probably the most important um, message for, for him to the, to the players. And then it will be Pat Cummins and his plans with his bowlers to ensure that the, the field placements are right. So he can just manage that time. If it's 30 minutes of gung-ho, if he can bring it back with the wicket, or if it might be 45 minutes or it might be a session, just to try and tempo that as much as possible. Who would you pick, Stark or Boland? Boland. But I don't know if it's up against Stark or Boland. Oh, go on. Well, the other one is, is Hazelwood. And I think, they're, I think they're really keen to get, him, to get him back in. I know he hasn't played a lot of cricket. I personally would still have um, Boland in my side. He's been absolutely brilliant. Um, it'd be interesting to say what the England players, what, you know, who, would who they, they not, want, not to want to face yeah. might, be, might be another question as well. But, yeah, it's Boland for me every day of the week. What do you think? Who don't the England batsmen want to face? I, I think if Hazelwood was at his peak, he would get in the team. But the issue with Hazelwood is his body. He's played three first-class games, I think, since the last Ashes Test match in, that he played in Brisbane, which is two years ago. Played four first-class games in the last two years, essentially. Constantly having these niggles. So it, that, that's the question, really. And, and in his absence, Boland has come in and done unbelievably well. I mean, he's, his figures at the moment are like late 19th century figures. You know, he's <laughs> yeah. averaging 14 with the ball. It's ridiculous. And he bowled brilliantly last week in the World Test Championship final. So it is a tricky call for them. I would go with Boland just because I think he's rock solid and you know what you're getting. And there's a question mark about Hazelwood's fitness. And it's a long series. You don't want to bring Hazelwood back too early and find then that injury strikes again. How would you have gone opening the batting in the baseball era? Well, I wouldn't have got in the side <laughs> for a start, Mike, as Ben That's what I wanted you to say. publicly <laughs> said uh, about two weeks ago. Actually, the, the thing is, if you, you're a product of your era and your time. You know, 20, 30 years ago when I played, it was a very different time. If I was 21 now, I'd be a different player because there's that influence of 2020. And also, you know as a young player, if you want to get in this England side, you have to, well, as an opener, you still, as Nick would tell you, you still have to show the capability of defending and soaking up pressure when you need to, but you also need to have the ability to get in this side run by Ben Stokes. You need to have the ability to put the pressure back on the bowlers. So that's what I'd be looking to do. <laughs> would you have loved to have... Would, you, would it have freed you up to say... I'm going to open the batting in this You'd kind have played of like Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> what are we sweeping the first ball? <laughs> I think it would have helped hugely. I mean, look, to be backed by your captain, to be backed by your coach in a way where they're saying, hey, we don't mind if you make a mistake, keep playing that way. And we don't mind if you make another mistake, keep going that way. I think that would benefit any cricketer. Um, and to know that you can go out there and actually free yourself up and play in a different way. The question mark is, do you have the ability to do that? And I think that's where it comes down to selection. And they've got players here who can do both. You know, you look all the way down that order. You know, they've gone with Bearstow instead of Folks. He's come back. And can he play in the same vein that he has in the last 18 months before his injury? Um, they've got all the names, all the players. Um, but playing that sort of way... Um, against a quality bowling attack like this, you know, defence will come in at some point. Can they keep up the best balls against the best bowlers in the world? And that would be the big question mark for England. We've been talking about key matchups all morning. Here's another one. Who's got the better off spinner? <laughs> that would be Australia. <laughs> and I think the record proves it as well. And I think for, for Nathan Lyon as well over the last few years, there's, there's probably a bit of a question mark in 2019 about his fourth innings bowling, can he bowl Australia to wins? And what we've seen over the, in Australia and, and overseas is that he's been able to do that. And it's not just because you've got 
Mitch Stark at you know six foot whatever making space for him and, and, and divots and, and that um, it's more so that his consistency he hasn't got caught up with needing extra deliveries he's just backed his skill set over and over again he's got some wonderful captaincy behind him as well and, and support in the field um, and I think he, he mentioned himself that India was a, a big tour for him because that's where spinners get judged yeah. a lot. I think this one for him is right up there as well. Yeah, OK. We're just running out of time. I've been asking everyone, who wins it? Michael. Oh, I think... <laughs> hard to call, but Australia haven't been in England for 20 years here since I played. It's that long ago. So I start with England in home conditions, given their run of form, being slight favourites. Mel. It's the whole series, because we've yeah. won here in 19... Here, here. Yeah, yeah OK. <laughs> just clarifying that one. <laughs> well, it, I... I can't see a draw happening, so there's, no. going to be, there's going to be a result in there. Um, I, I would like to then think that the Aussies get up in a 3-2 series. Wow, it's going to be brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us. And see, I didn't tell anyone that you were born in England. Oh, <laughs> English, Cut a palm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, guys.